album Pump. Um, on um, I ain't with the song man. Oh, Dropping Jewels. He talked about God a lot in that one. Okay. Please tell the jury what part of that song talks about the defendant being truly humble under God. So in the beginning, he said. Show me why I'm living, why am I remaining here? I know you weren't talking about nobody else but God. Oh, did he say the word God? You're right. Sit tight. I'm going to reveal some things you might not have seen in plain sight. The exhibits that were filed under seal on the state's motion for limitation of recording. Um, okay, let's, uh, let me address that to begin with. I'm just going to set it for a hearing um, because I have to notify the media. And uh, I was going to set that for Friday the 2nd at um, 3 o'clock. Yes. Do you know what a Crip gang sign looks like? Yeah. And could you, if I asked you, show the ladies and gentlemen jury what that looks like? And you made a motion with your uh, right hand, and what type of uh, letter did you make? I see. All right. Left hand at that um, Making a C. Okay. And is that similar to the C that you showed the Lace and Gemma jury earlier? Yes. And then um, the outfit, the blue outfit, is that um, right in the center? That's the gentleman you're talking about? Yes. And then if you can go, Mr. Kokomo, to 158 to 204. Did you hear in the words um, that performer say something about a crip walk? Did you hear that? No, I want to hear this. All right, at 158, if you could play that to 204. And that person in the blue outfit, do you recognize that dance? Yes. And we tell the ladies and gentlemen jury what that dance signifies. Um, a crit walk. Thanks. About the color blue. Do you recall that? Yes. Are there crits that are members of YSL? Yes. Is Gunna a crit? Yes. Is Duke a crit? Yes. Is Duke YSL? Yes. Is he a member of Young Slime Life, the gang? Yes. And what about Gunna? Is he a member of Young Slime Life? Yes. All right. Is Gunna's real name Sergio Kitchens? Yes. Is Duke's real name Martinez Arm? Yes. Do, do people in your life on Cleveland Avenue, in your familiar familiarity with 151 Cleveland Avenue, did you know people who have nothing to do with YSL that have sold drugs at 151 Cleveland Avenue? Yes. Several people? Yes. Multiple people? Yes. Does harm come of them when they sell drugs at 151 Cleveland Avenue? No. Okay. Of the proceeds you got from selling drugs, correct? Yes. You never gave any of that to Jeffrey? No. Okay. Did you have any agreement with any of these gentlemen in the courtroom to split money or share proceeds from selling your drugs? No. Who got the money from you selling your drugs? Me. Was it your own individual decision? Yes. Did anyone put you up to it? No. Did anyone tell you to stand at 151 Cleveland Avenue? No. What about 221 Cleveland Avenue? No. Various uh, paragraphs in each, each one of those uh, pages, right? Yes. And I want to take you directly to 16U to paragraph 14 in the factual acknowledgments. Can we go there? Yes. Now, in paragraph 14 of factual acknowledgments, uh, it states that defendant cannot truthfully assert that anyone charged in this indictment is not guilty of the crimes as alleged in this indictment, and defendant, you, you're, you're the defendant that's in this document, right? Yeah. That you, the defendant, Trontavia Stevens, will make no attempt at trial, prior to trial, or after trial, to exonerate or exculpate anyone charged in this indictment of the crimes alleged in this indictment, and that defendant, still being you, Trontavia Stevens, will not claim that anyone on this indictment is not guilty of the crimes as charged in this indictment. 
those were not your words, right? Correct. In your own mind, when you reflect on that paragraph 14, what does that paragraph 14 mean to you, that saying? I can't say nobody guilty or not guilty. That you can't come into this courtroom and that you can't come into this courtroom and say to this jury that anyone in this courtroom, anyone that's sitting in this courtroom as a defendant, you cannot tell this jury, even if you knew that they were objection. not guilty. Objection. You can't come into this courtroom, Mr. Stevens, and you are allowed, you're, excuse me, you're not allowed, you're prevented from saying that anyone who's charged is not guilty, correct? Yeah. And that paragraph says that you cannot truthfully say it, even if you wanted to say it, correct? Yeah. And, and you cannot claim that anyone is not guilty, correct? Yeah. You can't do it before the start. This trial ever started, right? Right. You can't come in here now and say it, correct? And when you leave, even after this trial is over, you can't even come back later and say that anyone was not guilty who sits in this courtroom, correct? Yes. As defendants. And then, and then you sign the plea agreement, right? Right. And when, and when the same district attorney's office, when they said to you that you couldn't get out for a bond, the same district attorney's office came to you and told you that you could get out if you took a plea, correct? Yeah. And that was within the span of you being in custody for seven months, right? Nine, yeah. Nine months. It's Adam Pump. Um, um, I ain't with the song, man. I was dropping jewels. He talked about the other lighting that one. Okay. Please tell the jury what part of that song talks about the defendant being truly humble under God. So in the beginning, he said, uh, dang, show me why I'm living, why am I remaining here? I know you weren't talking about nobody else but God. Oh, did he say the word God? You're right. I, I, didn't, I didn't say I, I knew what he was referring to okay. because can't nobody else show you why you living. My question? No. What are you answering? Did he say God, but I knew that he was referring to God. So, can you think of a single song where he, Bennett Williams, raps that he is truly humble under God? Not under these circumstances. So you cannot right now? No. Okay. So, in that time that you had a number of days to sign I this I could have document, changed something. Were you aware then that you could have changed something? Yes. And did you speak with your attorney about your knowledge that you could have changed something? No. You didn't talk to her about knowing you could change something if you want to? Come on, something that was already wrote on the paper? Or, uh, you can you finish one. Okay. Did you tell the state or your attorney, no, something on there is wrong? No. One of those is inaccurate. No. But you knew you could if you wanted to. Is that fair? I stand objection. Mr. Stevens, again, put your chair close to the microphone so we can hear you. Yes, sir. But were you aware that you could if you wanted to? Change. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, what about the change that you made after you signed the plea agreement? Okay. Now, what about the change that you made after you signed the plea agreement? Just hold that, Mr. Mr. Steele. Um, States Exhibit 24, Uniform, and 25, Uniform. 25 uniform Bravo were parts of the exhibits that Mr. Steele tendered for Mr. Williams. States exhibit 31 uniform. The middle of the uh, page where the witness on the stand on February the 6th says what part you ain't hearing? Why everybody ain't got something to say? What you mean? If I can't afford it, um, no, they can't. That's why when a nigga be dead serious, y'all niggas need to stay in your lane. It ain't no joke. Y'all ain't giving me nothing. Then we have do it feel saying I'm just to bring some when I pull up. And the, defend, uh, the witness on the stand saying, y'all know I paid last month's rent by myself. Here go, same thing right here. Slug, I know what you did. Um, and then he says, ain't nobody said nothing. And then he says, big, don't pull off. This uh, is to jump in with you. That's do it for feel. And then Slime Life Shorty says, send your bash. 
send your bash app for cash app. And then the witness on the stand sends a cash app, uh, a screenshot of his phone. Um, he goes on and says, I've been paid the rent. He's already testified, and again, this is also for impeachment purposes because he testified that he wasn't working, didn't have a job, stayed with his grandmother. Um, but he talks about having paid the rent. We will have another witness who has already given a statement to law enforcement that the web is a place that defendant Williams rented for YSL. We will have law enforcement officers who will come in here and testify about what was found when they actually searched the web. It is a place that has gotten shot up. It has surveillance cameras on the inside, and it was uh, there were money counters, drug paraphernalia, and drug sale items and evidence inside of the web. You have the owner of the Instagram account asking how many niggas be sleeping there. Give, give a number. And then you have 4K having it his way saying it's an easy 100 a piece. Easy. You see them working in concert with one another. You see them in this Instagram. You see them um, working for the benefit of the enterprise that is YSL. Um, we have 4K Tay having it his way. I just want to work. I'll even pay more. And then the witness on the stand, ain't nobody working. Everybody got their own motion. Find your purpose to the gang. And then Slime Life Shorty says, please and now. And then real one underscore FR says, six niggas sleep here. 4K Tay having his way says, I don't get it then. That's 600 right there. 12 if y'all go 200. They continue, the gang shot, you know how it be. And then they're saying, the same person is saying, too easy. 4K Tay then says, $40 a day, $1,200 a month. Um, and then we go on further down the line. Um, and we're talking about um, 4K Tay having his way, saying, I wash this hoodie. And then he says, and it's slime clothing line. Only reason I wanted a funky ass little nigga. 4K Tay having his way saying, won't wear shit of yours without washing it for a thousand. Um, and then later on. Okay, do any of these statements have uh, uh, or, in, or referenced Mr. Nichols? Uh, Your Honor, two things. They, as the court alluded to, they don't. Um, they are not made to law enforcement, um, so there's not a confrontation. I, I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not interested in that, but do these statements reference Mr. Nichols at all, or is he part of them at all? He well could be. Um, it would be the witness on the stand who will have well, to well say. Well, could be is not, not, you know, that's supposition, speculation. Well, I mean, because they, they would need to have something referencing or tying Mr. Nichols. That's his object, a part of his objection, I'm sure. Now, forget all the Duke stuff, bro. Forget all the gun and stuff and everything like that. Uh, and shout out to Duke because Duke picked up on it and was like, bro, YSL is not a gang. So basically, Tick basically knew that he could change it and he decided not to. Maybe he felt some kind of way about Doug or something like that and then figured out once he got there, like, I should probably switch it up. But they're coming. They're trying to make sure that Slug, a.k.a. Tick, a.k.a. whatever you want to call him, that he go back to jail. She just basically said that man perjured himself on the damn, uh, what's the name? On the witness stand today. That's what she said. She essentially said that, bro, what he said about the rent and everything like that, they pay some old lady, it was only two people standing there, that she got text messages that directly contradict what he's doing. So, he been trying to straddle the fence and play both sides, in my opinion. Then he realized, bro, you got to stay loyal and don't break code and all that, but then said some very damning stuff. It don't look good for right now. Now, once again, a trap house is not basically saying that y'all gonna make proceeds and that's gonna go directly to the gang. There ain't no trap house I ever seen. Trap houses to me typically is a spot you go post up at and the fiends know where to come get to work and that's it and that's it and everything like that. 
that's how I grew up on. I, hey, I'm I'm in the 90s with it. I'm in the early 2000s, 2010s with it. That's what I remember. Now, if it's switched up and all that, cool. But one thing he did do that kind of saved it is that he said he never paid nobody. Y'all know a part of the mafioso type of thing is you got to pay the bosses. Now, she basically about to do something that she don't want to do, but she's going to have to do. Discredit her own witness. How stupid do you got to be? And I'm not saying she's stupid, but I'm saying how pathetic of a case do you have to be to bring in a star witness? All of a sudden, you had to say, oh, man, I got to X out my own star witness. That's what she's going to have to do. By admitting that he's perjuring himself on there, that could go directly against her and her judge of character and how she forced this man to do a whole bunch of stuff. But she might have also saved herself by saying, you had the ability to change what you wanted to change. You ain't do that. So I don't know, man. It's, it's getting crazy out here, bro. But I, I will say this. As far as the Fonnie Willis stuff go and stuff like that, from what I understand, at worst, she can get fired. But it won't throw out nobody's cases. Somebody else that had to step up. It still doesn't stop what anybody else did and what everybody else is under. They're not alleging that she basically meddled in some cases and, and got them over, you know, and, and planted evidence and stuff like that. That's not what they're saying. They're saying she just got an ethics type of thing that's going on. And she messing with married men. And she don't have to sit in no type of deposition or nothing like that, which means they might have found something that uh, might have exonerated her. It is very possible that dude paid for certain things and stuff like that. And he just paid out of pocket for it because he was just being a gentleman. It's cool. Possibly. I don't know. But also at that same time, the fact she don't have to sit in and be deposed and stuff like that, that's very telling. I get y'all want to see Fonnie Willis fail and all this stuff and everything like that. But as far as it stands, I don't really care what anybody got to say against me. That's your own opinion. But that was a major win for her that she ain't got to go stand in and be deposed, which means that they found some stuff that absolutely supports whatever theory that she's running with. But one thing she can't do is make any statements. Now, once again, y'all daddy Trump, He's still in trouble. Thug and, and Lucci and all them cats, they still in trouble. It doesn't negate anything else unless they're alleged misconduct because hiring a special prosecutor is stuff that they do all the time. And a special prosecutor typically always costs a lot of money because they come with a bigger team. They come with people who are, uh, God dang it, I want to say spies, but that ain't the word right now. Uh, a private investigator. There we go. They come with a whole bunch of stuff because they're better at their job than typically you are. But share to keep your people alert. Subscribe, turn on the bell, stay notified. Let me know your thoughts on this one, bro. She flat out said, bro, we about to try to send this nigga back to jail. So I'm going to ask y'all this question. Do you think Tick is about to change his tune tomorrow? Because it's about to, tomorrow is going to be crazier than a day. But let me know something.